Hi guys, Andy here. Uh, we're getting to that time of year where we're expecting the next update to the Android operating system by Google. Um, we've known for a long time that obviously this will be the L release, if you weren't aware, it goes alphabetically. So KitKat last time, this time will be Lollipop. Um, it had been suggested perhaps lemon meringue pie or licorice, but no, in fact, Google let us know last week it will be Lollipop. Um, then I think it was last Friday they released the last, um, or well, the newest, but also possibly the last or the only uh, dev release of Lollipop itself. So we had a dev release of L, then they've released a dev release of Lollipop. And it is a dev release, so really it's only supposed to be for developers to try and test their apps and this sort of thing, but anyone can install it. So I thought I'd give it a go. We get the actual version in about two weeks' time, depending on when you're watching this video, but uh, the beginning of November, I believe, the actual release will come out to sort of Nexus devices. Well, will start in two weeks. Um, but I've put the dev uh, version on my Nexus 5 and I thought I would, uh, I would just show you around what I see as being different, what I like and if there's anything I don't like. Or if it's safe for you to upgrade now or if you should wait. Let's have a look. So installing it was, uh, was quite a simple process. Um, put in obviously my Gmail account, it then obviously wants the password, it then tells me, oh, would you want to restore your apps? Now, in previous versions of, An versions of Android, it's supposed to be able to do this, but it generally seems to pull back every app I've ever installed going back like three years, which can be quite annoying. But in this instance, I had a drop-down box, and I was able to see this Nexus 5, and I think it listed how many, well, it had like, I don't know, 90 apps or something it said, perhaps. And, or maybe it just said at a certain time, 5 p.m. this evening, I said, yeah, that one, please. And it did just reinstall the apps that I had on from that day. Um, so that's nice to see that actually working. It didn't appear to restore any data though, so I did then have to go back into apps to log in or, or some data I just lost. Um, you, it will reset you though if you install, if you flash the download like I did. Plus when the update comes you might be okay, it might just, uh, it might just carry on with letting, leaving your apps be. Um, I also got an option to tap and go using NFC and in theory I touched the back of another device and it, and it took everything across. Um, I haven't unfortunately been able to test that because I didn't have another device handy, but that would be quite interesting to know, does that then push over app data? What does it take? Does it, does it just restore the apps using the uh, information given by the other device? <coughs> I don't know. So, one of the first things I noticed was a change obviously in the, in the notification bar and the pull down menu. So, in this instance I've got my notification, so I've got an, uh, an email notification, I've got a, a persistent notification from an app I installed this morning. Um, and they slide in and out, oops, nice and easy. If I either tap at the top or do the two finger pull down, or if I simply pull down once and pull down again, I get my quick panel. Now I quite like in here that we get separate turn Wi-Fi on and off and we get um, Wi-Fi settings. So Bluetooth on and off and Bluetooth settings. So the Wi-Fi, if I tap on the bit that says what well, I'm connected, that's, that's my actual Wi-Fi settings or the menu. Whereas if I tap on the actual thing it just turns it off. Let's turn it back on again. Another one. Hotspot only appeared after I'd actually used the hotspot, which is quite clever. So if you're the kind of person that never tethers, that's not taking up space. Uh, but if you do, there it is. I'm assuming the space for other ones, but I did try a few other things and nothing else appeared there. Um, also, I don't really use cast screen, I don't really use airplane mode, but I've got no way of, you know, I'd have, I'd have, oh, turn it on there. I'd have quite liked if I could, uh, if I could remove those two to, again, keep it nice and neat. Um, usual to well actually what i do i show you the lock screen notifications so i generally don't use a lock screen i prefer just to be able to get straight into my phone when i turn it on um i'm kind of having to at the moment i'll explain later but what i do like is at least you get your notifications down your lock screen i can go straight in if i tap once it kind of highlights it and i tap again and it's going to go in to the actual email which is just about my fantasy football league which is fine um so that's that's because a lot of the time I just turn my phone just to check the notifications. So if they're right there on the lock screen, that's actually easier than if I turn it on and have to pull the bar down. So, um, so I quite like that. Uh, we also have now flashlights in the quick, quick settings. Look, 
I don't think that was there before on stock. Could be very handy. I like uh, I like the, that being there. Um, we still have Google now when we go right over to the side. Got my dentist appointment today. I have lots of teeth taken out with all the usual stuff. But what I did notice the first time I went in, it started recommending me TV shows which I haven't seen before. Maybe it, maybe it has in America for a while, but it's not going to do it now. Normally there's, there's some stuff there because I'm quite early in the morning. There's nothing on the TV that I would want to see. But I've got into Google now. Now this I am seeing quite a lot. Uh, Google search or Google now seems does seem to be crashing for me. I've not heard that as feedback from others, but I'll even be just doing other things and it, and it will crash. So a bit of instability there. But yeah, I did like so it's recommending TV shows and movies and things, and I, I can either say yeah I'm interested in this sort of TV show or no I'm not. Or if it's a movie, I can say yeah I've seen this, and then I can say yeah I liked it though, or and that will obviously help it recommend other things to me. Then of an evening when you're going to Google now, it will say something like oh you might want to watch this. TV program and it might not be one that it's mentioned before but it'll say you know it's on TV and you might like it which I really like that's really quite clever I'm not I'm still trying to figure out how it was understood which shows I like because most of the shows it's telling me about are shows that I like and I guess maybe I've googled them at some point but I don't eh, I don't know anyway very clever I thought I, was, I quite liked it um, if we tap on the top bar we can then tap these different things along the top so I can either I can tap the battery and I quite love that it tells me approximately 11 hours left at the rate you go in. I'll get to about 8 or 9 o'clock. Uh, what it doesn't tell me, I don't think. So obviously I can see roughly I came off charge at about 7, half 7. But it doesn't, I don't think it actually tells me now how long I've actually been using the phone. Which seems a little bit odd to me. That was To me that was quite important. Oh, I'm down to 80%. But I've got four hours use out of it. That's that's different to if I've only got three hours use. And this is very vague now. So maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see that it tells me. I don't really like those kind of I mean look, it it moves, the funny wave or shadow. I don't know what it's quite what it's supposed to be. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't I think that's new. Um also let me just go back to that again. So we can go straight to our settings by tapping on the cogwheel, and you might have already noticed, I think that kind of rocked, did that roll out of the way as we tapped it? Yeah, they all kind of slide away. There's a lot of animations now in Lollipop. Um, you know, if what you want to tap this, you'll see, you'll see the kind of this button kind of wave, see it sort of wave outwards, um, which is nice, I can, I can, I don't, I'm, although I don't like that top bit. Right, if I tap on the little icon of me, I get to add a new user. Add new user, yes please. Switching to new user, and effectively, this is like a whole fresh, oh, even Google search still crashing. So the phone's owner can uninstall your apps and completely remove you from this space. Any other user can accept or data permission on your behalf, blah, blah, blah. So, but you can set up, you know, if you want to uh, log in for like your kids or whatever, or in my instance, I can put in an Android and a UK login, as well as, um, is this where it tells you it's just a preview version of, of Lollipop? Which is fine. Let's check in connection. So in fact, I'll install, I'll install, uh, I'll log in as Android Andy, just so we can see that as well, how that works. So I've logged in as Android Andy, and you, you do, you go through everything like you would uh, no, not Google now. No, thank you. So it is just like if you set up the phone from fresh. Now, surprisingly, you get almost nothing. So the Play Store is there, but there's not even Gmail. It's not Google Plus. You'd have to install them yourselves. Um, what I will do while we're here, I'll show you the Contacts app. That's a little odd that it's not signed in, but let's see. That should. Oh. Hmm. Okay, and I'll log in again, one second. So here we are logged into the contacts. Um, you can see there's not much information for Sergey, Cookie Monster. It's interesting, it tries to change the note, the, the bar at the top to match. So for Santa, it's chose grey, it's a little, you'd have thought red. I quite like those, you slide up, it sort of fades to that colour until it becomes just the name at the top there. Actually, I don't think it's tries. Well, no, it does. It's matched it there, isn't it? But I think that's very, uh, very swish, very smooth. So we can simply switch between users by tapping on that user. One thing I noticed, as I said, I don't like having lock screens. 
I have to now have at least swipe. If we go to my security, there's no longer an option for nothing. Ever since I've added a user, I have to at least have a swipe, which is a little bit weird. Um, there is now also, and I don't actually see where we uh, where we set it up. Uh, the face unlock is, I think, oh, screen pinning. So different users, you can have them just held to one screen as well. So the face unlock, you can now have that. Effectively, you still do, and you do like a pin unlock. Um, so you need to set the pin unlock up. But if it happens to be good enough like that it can just see it's your face while you're about to put the pin in, it will just unlock it for you. Which I think is quite a clever, quite a clever way of implementing the uh, the face unlock. So what else did I? Yeah, I mentioned on the guest news we've done, the hotspot I've mentioned. Um, so although I don't use it much, I quite like that we get the option to cast screen baked right on in. I can't remember if that was already on the last, I think it possibly was in KitKat. Uh, it, we also have now support for 64-bit devices. I don't think they're out just yet, but the support is there. I remember being told that encryption came as default, but I've tried logging into my work accounts and it still says you're not encrypted when I put Google services on. So... Um, not entirely sure if that's happened or not. Uh, there's also support for on devices that allow it that you can say, okay, Google, when the screen is off and it'll wake up, kind of like I think the Moto X does. I understand the Nexus 6 and the Nexus 9 will, will support that. Um, from the lock screen, I should point out, so I thought I, if I was to hold on the camera look and slide up, I thought it would go into the camera. But actually, The, the icon on the, on the edges of what happens if you come in from one of the sides. Oops. There we go. Camera I don't think has changed much. Um, so generally there's a lot of aesthetic changes. So I was fairly sure I'd noticed as I was scrolling through and I can't see it now. I thought I could see the kind of the pulsing um, like like we get in let me see let me try battery so if you watch no maybe not well yeah you see the pulse because it sees me tapping anyway so yeah there's lots of little pulsing if you install something you get sort of things waving across uh, the line sort of pulsing across um, what else what else the app drawer is now got a solid white background like sort of cards look you see the they're on, they're on like a card that you're sliding across, which matches, I guess, the way the notifications work now, because they're on sort of white cards as well. Uh, the the app switching, sorry, this, this is very fancy as well. They're all kind of cards. Now, the weird thing for me, I think, my goodness, look how many apps, look how many they are. Jesus. Now, I'm going to power off. This won't be the most exciting bit of video you've seen in a long while, we're going to power off and power back on and I think all those apps still show up because I'm fairly sure I'd, I'd rebooted yesterday morning and went into the app switcher an hour or two later and all of those apps were still there which I thought was a little bit odd I would have, you know, normally when you boot up an Android it's kind of you, any apps that have been opened recently it's that sort of almost your app history but um, it seemed to just be almost a sort of a quick, well, it's not even quick access, is it really? I suppose it's quick access if you've recently used them, but when they're right at the back of that list and you're looking for the for the relevant cards, it's not very quick. So, we see the uh, spinning, spinning Google coloured dots. I think we're about to come back to life. Android. All right, get on with it. There we go. So we've just booted up, let's see, am I right? Yeah, so that seems a little weird. It actually remembers almost. Um, and you would, you know, you, as you, we have in the past, we just slide them aside if we don't want them anymore. Ah, that's, that reminds me, interruptions. So, now I think the quickest way to, to get to this, if I hit the volume, none, priority and all. If I tap priority, and then I say for one hour, for two hours, for three hours. Let's go into the cog though. So effectively what we're saying is I will only have priority interruptions. Now you can change what that is. Events and reminders, actually I'm not so bothered about that. But calls and messages, they will still get through. But you can then say from only my starred contacts will come through. So I get a phone call for some random person, it's not getting through. Um, 
you can then also set like priority downtime. So if you want the weekends only these to come through, job done. We get a little star in the in the corner. What's it updating? It's updating some apps. Uh, we get a little star showing that we're set to priority only. And I can easily change it back again. All. You notice then it says sort of 59 minutes left. Or you can say, I don't want anything coming through at all for an hour. Done. No interruptions. Uh, turn that back off again though. So I think that's uh, that's quite cool. And this obviously stays swipe away as normal. Um, what else, what else, what else? So, I think really all that's left is to talk about stability. The only app that I found that won't actually run, and I know it's not just me because I've heard someone else say, I think it was on the All About Android. Time up doesn't even open. That's the only app I've found. Everything else seems to be fine. The only other thing then is, uh, is Google stuff. So I've heard people have some problems with Google Music. I haven't myself. I have Google search crashing, which is Google now crashing relatively often. And I've also had some problems with Google Maps. I see, because I've just rebooted, it might be okay. But I have been times I go into, yeah, so that seems to be, that seems to be fine. But there have been times I've, I've tapped uh, the navigation icon. It sort of starts loading that page up and then it, then it just crashes maps. The way around that would appear to be, okay, Google, navigate to Brent Cross Shopping Center. I keep Here is Brent Cross Shopping Center. Thank you. I keep forgetting with uh, with the phone you have to pause more. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Navigate to Brent Cross Shopping Center. Because with a watch, you generally just say okay. Navigating and give. to Brent Cross Shopping yeah, Center. Right. So that was my way around. I could I could navigate to places without having to do the person the navigate button, and that seemed to work fine. So all in all, I mean, I'm still going to run with it uh, for the moment. It's the the crashes are relatively minimal and and, and nothing too bad. I installed Waze just in case I need to use a different navigation software. Um, and I've got my Note 4 hopefully coming in the next few days. Anyway, I'll be switching back to that. But it's been quite good to come back to my Nexus 5 and to try out Lollipop. It certainly looks very nice. Possibly, it worries me that some people will be put off because they're trying to make it look too nice. Um, but I don't think we lose functionality over over the sort of aesthetics in any way. So, so there we go. That's Lollipop. Let me know your thoughts. Have I missed anything? Do you know other apps that don't work so well? Oh, I should point out, I think we, we're using... Um, Art by default now, the, the runtime instead of Dalvik. If that means nothing to you, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, but there we go, that's Lollipop. Oh, there is a, and I've not actually done it yet myself, um, there's a Easter egg. And I forget, I must, I guess it's on. A Lollipop. I thought, oh no, it changes colour. I thought it was like a Flappy Birds game. Because I'm not really not bothered by them, I've not bothered looking, but uh, how bizarre. Unless it's on a different, maybe it's the build, let's just try. Oh no, that's the, de that's the developer one, I'm a developer now. Basically somewhere there was, uh, you get like a Flappy Birds game, but it's an, with an Android flying through, I think. But as I say, I'm really not too fussed. So, there you go. Android's latest version, a lollipop. My name's Andy, I'll catch you all again soon.